But if we were to travel back in time to the Pleistocene epoch, roughly 700,000 to 600,000 years ago, while the Earth transitioned out of the Ice Age period, glacial meltwater flowed down the Sierra Nevada and filled California's Central Valley, creating an ancient super lake that sprawled over 300 miles from north to south, covering around 30,000 square miles at its peak and plunging as much as 1,000 feet deep. The lake extended from the foothills of the Sierra Nevada in the east to the coast ranges in the west, nearly splitting California in two. At the time, tectonic uplift along California's coast created a natural dam, trapping water in the valley. This caused the valley to fill up like a bowl. Lake Corcoran was teeming with life, a mix of species you'd expect in an ancient lake, but also some surprising additions given its unique Ice Age environment. The lake would have been home to a range of aquatic plants, fish and microorganisms. But it wasn't just the lake itself. The shores and nearby areas attracted a range of wildlife that flourished in the lush, wet environment. Colombian mammoths and mastodons were common in the Ice Age landscapes of North America and their fossils have been found in Lake Corcoran's surrounding areas. These massive herbivores likely roamed along the lake's shores, using the water as a resource while finding vegetation nearby. The slow-moving giant ground sloths could reach up to 10 feet tall when standing on their hind legs and are also believed to have lived in forests and open areas near the lake. These plant-eating animals would have attracted predators such as the famous saber-toothed cats, which had long, curved canine teeth. These powerful predators likely prowled the areas around the lake, hunting animals that came to the lake for water. Fossil evidence shows that dire wolves were common predators and scavengers during the Ice Age and are thought to have hunted in packs and may have taken advantage of the large prey found around Lake Corcoran. Most of these fossils have been uncovered through excavations at various sites in California, such as the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, as well as in quarries, riverbeds and construction sites throughout the Central Valley. Fossils found in river sediments and floodplain deposits near ancient lake beds like Lake Corcoran give paleontologists clues about the types of animals that once roamed these areas. In addition to large mammal fossils, paleontologists have found remains of smaller animals like rodents, rabbits and birds, as well as fossilized plant material. These findings paint a picture of a rich, diverse ecosystem that surrounded Lake Corcoran, much like modern African savannas where large herbivores and predators cohabitate around water sources. The lake was a dynamic body of water with rivers flowing into it. Over time, the natural dam that had held back the lake eroded. When the water pressure got too high, there was a massive outflow finally breaching the coastal ranges near the Carquinez Strait. The lake's erosion created a pathway for the water to flow out toward the ocean, ultimately carving the way for what we now call the San Francisco Bay and the Sacramento-San Joaquin River Delta. Once Lake Corcoran began to drain, it rapidly shrank. As water levels receded, the landscape around Lake Corcoran changed from a lush lakeside environment into a mosaic of wetlands, grasslands and dry plains. The herbivores, which relied on the lush vegetation near the lake, would have been forced to migrate to other water-rich areas. Subsequently, the carnivorous predators faced a new challenge as their prey moved away. These predators likely had to expand their hunting ranges, making survival more difficult. In essence, the erosion and draining of Lake Corcoran marked a dramatic shift, forcing existing species to either adapt to the new landscape 
migrate to better habitats, or face extinction. It was a massive natural reorganization of ecosystems, shaping the Central Valley into a dry, fertile landscape that became home to new kinds of wildlife and eventually extensive human agriculture. The drying of the Central Valley into what is now an agricultural powerhouse was supported by the rich, nutrient-dense sediments from Lake Corcoran's long presence. This fertile soil has supported an abundance of wildlife, especially bird populations, as agricultural fields have provided new foraging opportunities. The Corcoran Lake left behind sediment layers, which has turned the central valley floor into what is now an agricultural powerhouse. It created fertile land for major agricultural hubs like Fresno, Bakersfield and Modesto that are supported by the rich, nutrient-dense sediments from Lake Corcoran's long presence. There is only a small remnant of the lake's footprint in the southern part of the valley where the dry Tulare Basin occasionally collects water. A faint echo of Lake Corcoran's grand past Today, no water from Lake Corcoran remains. Although this massive Pleistocene epoch lake is long gone, it has left us with knowledge as to how geological forces like tectonic uplift and erosion shaped the land on a grand scale and provides explanation as to why California's landscape looks the way it does today, from its fertile valley to the San Francisco Bay.